My name is Rebecca Mason. I'm a student at the University of New Hampshire, and I've been doing a lot of thinking as to how to apply the knowledge I'm gaining from my, my organic chemistry class. Um, and I've decided to focus my attention on a distillation process that will help a local company be more efficient in a cleaning process that it uses um, that uses isopropyl alcohol. This company specializes in a, uh, electrical devices that require a series of cleansing techniques to remove a sap-like rosin from their electrical boards. This rosin is extremely hydrophobic, so it is best removed in a solvent like isopropyl. To put it plainly, it's like trying to remove pine sap from your fingers. It's not very fun or easy at all. Unfortunately, once dissolved in the alcohol, the rosin contaminates the alcohol, making it uh, usable, unusable for further washings. Uh, it's like trying to wash dishes with dirty water. Um, the isopropyl is expensive to buy in bulk and can be quite inconvenient to dispose of. I'm conducting this feasibility experiment um, to perfect a simple distillation technique that hopefully uh, the company can use to distill the isopropyl from the rosin and reuse it again for, further wa for later washings. Um, the components of the contaminated solution is isopropyl alcohol with a boiling point of 82 degrees Celsius, benzyl alcohol, um, which boils at 205 degrees Celsius, water at 100 degrees Celsius, and rosin that boils around 300 or greater um, degrees Celsius. The main purpose of this distillation is to remove the rosin, and since its boiling point is so much greater than isopropyls, a simple distillation procedure should be sufficient. The distillation apparatus seen here is, uh, has a round bottom flask containing about 50 milliliters of contaminated solution. Um, the still head, which will um, pass the isopropyl vapors to the condenser here, and as the vapors cool, um, they'll condense and trickle down as a liquid into the receiving flask. Theoretically, this uh, solution should only consist of isopropyl alcohol, uh, maybe a little bit of water if the temperature can be um, easily and accurately controlled, but we want it as pure as possible. Here's the thermometer where I will be uh, monitoring the temperature of the solution. And here's the tricky part. I need to pay uh, close attention to when I start seeing vapors um, form in the, the still head and the temperature at which this is happening um, because this will indicate to me uh, the substance in my mixture um, that is being converted from liquid to a gas. If I know that isopropyl boils at around 82 um, degrees Celsius, then I watch the temperature rise to around that point and maintain that temperature so only the isopropyl is converted uh, to a vapor. If the temperature gets too high and gets closer to 100 degrees Celsius, I risk vaporizing water as well. Um, which will lower the purity of my distillate. Luckily, my rosin, um, uh, the rosin, which is my main target, has a boiling point close to 300 degrees Celsius, so there is a slim to none chance that I will vaporize the rosin and recontaminate my distillate. After the procedure is completed, uh, spectroscopy can be used to evaluate the efficiency of the distillation process and the purity of my distillate. The contaminants that are removed can then be easily disposed of according to the company's disposal procedures. Um, to begin, I turned on the water in the condenser here to prepare it for when the vapors begin to come through. And um, then I'll record the temperature when I turn on my thermal well, which is right here, uh, to heat up the solution in my flask. And then I will um, maintain the temperature once vaporization starts to occur and um, try to maintain that temperature for as long as possible, um, which will be around 82 degrees Celsius, the boiling point of isopropyl. I will continue distillation until one of three things happens. Either the uh, receiving flask um, becomes 75% full um, or uh, five milliliters remains in the boiling uh, flask. I don't want to make it uh, too concentrated in there. Or um, also if the um, uh, expected boiling point range, the upper level is reached. Um, then I will uh, turn off the heat source with the thermal well and will place the isopropyl sample in an appropriate container for purity verification. The rosin residues will then be disposed of according to the company's um, disposal procedures. If my distillation uh, procedure is af uh, adequate, I will draft a protocol that the company can use to purify its own alcohol and reuse it to conduct more washing cycles for further use. And, I, and we shall see, hopefully it works.